Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. In this tutorial, we are going to learn how you can create a Nimbus cloud using Niagara Particle system and also how you can implement this with motion matching character. So without further ado, let's get started. Let's go to the content drawer and we'll create a Niagara system. So for creating something like a cloud, you could also use Niagara fluids. So here we have amazing templates of gases, smoke effects, fluids, other fluids. So for creating clouds, you can use something like this, which will look really nice, but it will cost you a performance. So instead we will use sprites. So go to the template and I will select a fountain template right over here. Let's hit create and NS underscore Nimbus. All right, I'll get it right over here. Here we have a simple fountain template. As I said, it's using Sprite Renderer. So using this default Sprite material, it is spawning these particles. So to create a cloud, we will be needing a cloud material. So for creating cloud material, either you can use by uh, creating noise or you can use a sprite as well because we are using sprite renderer so that's why i found this clouds texture i found this in one of a youtube video and i think it looks really nice so this is looking like a realistic cloud tiled map right over here and of course if your game theme is something else you could also use a stylized uh, clouds sprite okay uh, I'll close this up. Let us create a material for this cloud texture. So let's hit material M underscore Nimbus cloud. I'll get it right over here. Let's get a, this texture sample. So one shortcut that you can use where you can hold the T key on your keyboard and press the left mouse button this texture sample will just spawn right away okay this over here t underscore clouds will get the clouds and we can so over here in the material properties we can set the blend mode to translucent because we don't want uh, we just want the alpha value over here to get eliminated and we have just the clouds okay so if you look at the demo you will find that our cloud has a little gradient right over here okay so what we will do is to create a gradient we will be lurping between two values so if we go to the material over here let's create two constant vector three so constant vector three or with the alpha value okay and let's hit duplicate convert both of them to a parameter one we can rename this as top color and the another one we can rename this as bottom color all right so let's give them a simple color put this yellow and this one I can set this to white all right so now that we have a top color and bottom color let's first visualize this so to create a gradient we can lerp so lerp is linear interpolation so linear interpolate there it is so what this does is let's just connect this to emissive color so if it is set to 0.5, that means it will be blending between both of these colors. If I set this to 0, the A value will get selected. If I select 1, the B value will get selected. So to create a gradient, of course, we need to lerp between these two values. But how we can create something gradient? So for that, we have this node. We can use this node called as bounding box based UE. What this will do, it will try to split the material in X, Y, Z axis, right? Imagine there's a plane which will split these in X, Y, Z axis. And 
So the x, y, z axis represents over here R, G, B masked values over here channels. So what we can do is we can get the x and we can select power over here and over here we can create a default parameter constant parameter let's give this a value maybe one and i'll connect this to the alpha and you will find that it is creating a gradient right over here but it is in a different axis for the cloud we need it from top to bottom if i select y axis it will create from here you can see the y axis right over here the x axis will go from left to right if i go and select z axis it will select from top to bottom just like this all right so bottom color i suppose we can set it to a and top color we can set it to b all right so now that we have it and this if we increase it will just like increase its intensity so let's just convert this to a parameter and we'll call this as gradient power or intensity all right now that we have this let us just get the alpha value of this and connect this to the opacity so we will have something looking like this and that's what we need for now let's head back to our Niagara system right over here first and the foremost that we need to do is inside the sprite renderer let's get our material there you go it should look something like this which is a mess all right so what do we not need let's just get rid of it so the velocity we do not need the gravity we do not need and also drag we do not need it should look something like this all right so now we will change the shape of this so it is not a sphere we'll create something like torus or a disc i'll select the disc and it's looking somewhat like this all right so you will find that our sprites are actually still tiled so inside the sprite renderer here you will need to go to sub uv and we want to select blending enabled and the image size over here you can say it as we are like reverse tiling it so to the power of two you can set it like four we will see let's set this to eight and it will look something like this all right so now inside the emitter state let's set this to one we want it to be infinite spawn rate we can increase to like 500 and go to the initialized particle let's set the lifetime to one just as it is over here we can set the scaling of the sprite so inside initialized particle let's set the scale over here this to 10 and this we can set this to like 200 and let's zoom out well it should look something like this we are getting close okay so now over here in the color let's go ahead and create a user parameter so read from user parameter Over here we can set the ring radius to 50 and if you open this up we can set the scaling of this so we do not want it to be a complete ring shape. Let's reshape this in the x axis 2.3 and this I'll set this to 2. Well it should start looking somewhat like a cloud now because we have set the shape to it. Okay. Here in the scale color, over here we will select ramp up and down and scale curve we can set it to 0.1 but before this what you need to do is if you go over here 
we need to multiply this with a particle color node so what this node will do is particle color expression ties into the current color of the given particle based on the per particle color data so i'll get the alpha value of this and i will set it to the opacity over here and you will see it is nice looking cloud right now to give this more life we can add sub uv animation sub uv animation right over here and over here you select sprite renderer and you will find that it's look like animating it has a life so that was a base of the cloud as you can see which i think looks really nice so of course you can just change the color from here to like set it to purple and it will reflect right over here there you go and you can change the gradient power over here and yeah all right so uh if you look inside my demo you will find that uh the cloud the nimbus cloud also have this tail right so this is actually the duplicate of the cloud itself all right so let's make that all right so let's jump to our niagara system let's rename this as base and let's create a duplicate of this hitting control d and over here let's rename this as trail i would like to set the color somewhat like yellow as the nimbus cloud is yellowish tint yeah a little bit more yellow would define it all right looks nice okay so right over here what you can do also you can use a gpu compute sim and over here inside the properties you can set this to fixed bounds we want to use a cpu ba cpu based uh, niagara system okay uh, over here in the trail we will need to add a velocity so inside a particle spawn let's add velocity so add velocity and we will add the velocity in one direction so in x direction we will add velocity so somewhat like 200 let's start with and in z we do not want any velocity all right let's increase this like 300 this also looks nice and the speed of the velocity also you can play with all right so now the shape instead of this ring shape let us select a cylinder and i will set this to 20 20 somewhat like this and this scaling i will just reset this okay so the velocity is here scale color so i think this i will set it to how it was before but i will add scale sprite size scale sprite size this one and i'll just reverse this so i will use this one and there you go we have somewhat looking like this this also i can play with the values i think 0.1 is not it one it is okay i set this to one let's see what else we can do over here so animation yep sprite renderer i don't want it to cast any shadows so this also i will disable all right so i think this looks pretty nice so here we have the trail as well of the cloud so of course you can just play with the values and over here also in the initialize particle 
you can change this to like I set this to zero and this you can increase if needed so yeah so that's how it is uh, you can create a Nimbus cloud with the Niagara system thank you so much for watching this video in the next tutorial we will learn how you can implement the basic flying mechanics using this Nimbus cloud and the basic motion matching character so stay tuned for that thank you